This is James Lupton. I'm delighted to be joined with Jonathan Banks on Zoom today. Jonathan, how are you? I'm great, man. How you doing? I'm very good. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, no problem. I'm going to talk a little bit of boxing, as always. Tyson Fury. Um, obviously, you met Tyson a long time ago back in the Cronk over there in Detroit. Uh, talk about your first meeting with Tyson Fury. What was it like and what was he like? <laughs> I, I met up with him um, in Saudi Arabia when I was just there. It was the exact same way. Tyson Fury is a he he's just a fun, fun, fun guy, man. He he's just he's a charmer, man. He he's a nice guy. I have nothing negative to say about him. Um I enjoyed his company then and uh, then and now. You know, he he's just a just one of them guys that that, you know, it's never a bad day to be around. It was sort of reported at, at the time, sort of Emmanuel has come out and said he will be the future of heavyweight boxing. Emmanuel had noticed his his star quality and his talent and his potential from that time, from meeting him. Did you see that as well? Man, of course. I mean, it, it wasn't just his talent because so many heavyweights have talent. It's his mindset and his grit that um, that everyone noticed. They're saying this dude's gonna be a force to be reckoned with. You know, a lot of a lot of heavyweights. And you studied boxing for all these years. You've seen so many heavyweights with the talent, and wonder why? Why just just why didn't they just make it all away? He have a grit that um that everybody just don't have, and is is obvious. You can obviously see it now. It's easy to see it now, but you might even saw it then before anybody else seen it. So I thought. I just thought that's typical Emmanuel. He always see, he always look and see, uh, look for talent that everybody may not see, but he see it. So, you know, that's why he was so, so good at what he did. Am I right in saying you sparred Tyson at the time? I did. I did spar him. It was, um, it was a super, super long time ago, but, you know, we had fun in there, man. He He's a, you can learn he he's a, you can learn a lot from him and he's just he's a, like i said he, he's a good guy to be in the ring with and sprout with he's good work great work actually the reason i asked that is because fast forward later down the line you would see training with Vladimir klitschko and you was training to fight against tyson fury first of all did you take anything from those spars into your game plan and tactics with Vladimir? I had nothing to do with it. We two different people, two different styles. So I had nothing to do with it. And Tyson had a boatload more experience at the time they fought than the time we we shared the ring together. Did you use any of your time with Tyson back in the Kronk at all in that camp with Vladimir, knowing his mindset, for example, as you mentioned earlier? You said, did I use any time? Any of your experience that you had with your time with Tyson? I mean, it, it it wasn't that much. It it wasn't that much time. And again, Tyson Fury was a different. He was on a different level at the time they fought. So with him rising up to to start star level, then the mindset that that mindset is not that it changed. It only intensified, if anything, you know. But um. A lot of a lot of people didn't really didn't really see how good he was, and um, but I seen it. And I'm, I'm, I'm and I'm telling I'm telling them that this is gonna be one of the hardest fights of your career because this kid here, you know, he's he's coming to fight. But I think the opposite thing happened. Tyson didn't have his best performance that night. In my opinion, Vladimir didn't have his best performance in that fight. They, it's not like they both, it's not like Tyson came in and beat him up, beat him down and stopped him. Um, he didn't throw as many punches as he normally do now. Even now, you see him. He's very active now. He wasn't active that night or that fight, you know, but he he was the better man on, on the night and he won the fight. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. Absolutely. Now, you've been a fighter yourself. You've been there as a pro. You know what it's like to train for somebody and to 
you know, do your homework as such and you'll you'll potentially have some fighters that you train harder for and you know that it'll be a harder night's work for yourself. Do you get the same as a trainer when you're training your fighter? Do you feel the same way where you know some opponents will be a harder night's work and you have to train that little bit harder? Well, I do every fight. Even if I'm even like I was just um I'm 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 home in Detroit now because I had a young guy, he was eight and oh, now he's nine and oh. He fought um this weekend and I trained I was working with him like it was a world title fight. Um Emmanuel's taught me we train every fight like as if it's your world title fight or if it's your last fight, because there's no guarantees in there. You know, so I don't do, if I took a guy, if I knew this guy wasn't a hard fight and I was fighting, maybe I, maybe I, I would train hard, make sure I'm in shape, but it wouldn't be as intense as it was if it was a world title. But I don't allow my guys to do that because I'm in control when I'm, when I'm in the bell ring. I'm more in control. I'm not in control when I'm in the corner, when, I, when I'm coaching. So um, I, I err on the side of caution. Because I know that anything can happen. Absolutely.